In today's lesson, we're going to continue to talk about matter, and we've learned already that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. In our last lesson, we talked about density, that relationship between the mass and volume of an object. And all of those things that we've talked about are different characteristics that matter has. But today we're going to continue talking about those characteristics as we talk about physical properties of matter. Now when we talk about a property, essentially we're just describing a characteristic that an object or a substance has. It's just another name for saying a characteristic, a quality, an attribute. Now there's lots of different characteristics or properties that we can use to describe objects and substances, but they all fall in one of two categories. And those categories are physical properties and chemical properties. In this lesson, we're going to focus on the physical properties of matter. And in the next lesson, we'll look at some different chemical properties. Now, when we talk about the physical properties of an object, we're really just talking about any characteristics or properties of that object that we can observe, measure, and describe without chemically altering or changing the identity of the substance. Over the next few lessons, we'll start looking at chemical changes and chemical reactions and things like that. But physical properties do not require a chemical reaction. They don't require a chemical change in order to observe those properties in action. Now here we see on this graphic the example of physical properties of an apple. And when we describe the physical properties of an apple, again, it's what do we see as we look at it, as we observe it without changing that apple. So we could describe things like the size of the apple, the mass of the apple, the shape of the apple, the color. All of those are examples of physical properties. Now I have a list here. Of course, this isn't every single physical property a substance can have, but this is a pretty inclusive list of them, some of the major ones at least. And it describes things like the color of an object, the mass of an object, the volume, the density, the melting point. And that's one, you know, melting point, boiling point, freezing point. Those are some that throw people off a little bit because they think, well, if I take a cube of ice and I melt it, I've changed the ice. But really, we haven't changed the substance itself because we started out with water, frozen water, solid form of water. And by adding heat, we just changed it to a liquid form. If we keep adding heat, we change it to a gas form. But we still have water. So the idea of boiling, melting, freezing, those are examples of changes of physical properties, not examples of changes of chemical properties. So these still remain physical properties of the object, even though some people, you know, when you first hear it, you think, oh, that should be a chemical property because it's changing. That's not really the case with these properties. Another important physical property is conductivity, the ability to transfer energy through it. Um, it could be conductive of heat, conductive of electricity, conductive of sound. Uh, those are examples of conductivity if those types of energy can pass easily through a substance. Solubility, and we'll be looking at an activity with this, but that just describes the ability of a substance to dissolve, usually in water. If it'll dissolve, we say it's soluble in water. Something like salt would be soluble, it would have that property, and something like sand, if we put it in water, would not dissolve, it would not be soluble. Viscosity is a property that applies to liquids and just describes how thick or how thin the liquid is in relation to its ability to flow. Some liquids, viscosity allows them to flow easily, um, like water, like alcohol, like oil. Those flow fairly easily, but then others, like maple syrup, for example, do not have nearly the same level of viscosity that those others do. Flexibility is the last physical property on our list, and it just determines how easily or how effectively an object can bend or flex without breaking. Now these are just a few examples of physical properties that an object can have, properties that we can observe, that we can measure, that we can test without changing the identity of the substance. In our next lesson, we'll be looking at chemical properties, that other type of property that does require changes to the substance. And over the course of our next videos, we'll be looking at several labs and several examples of both types of properties.